I gotta be honest, I made only one tier list video on my channel for now, which is the skill tier list video for Fear and Danger, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So today, we are gonna cover the tier list for the playable characters in Fear and Hunger! First of all, I want a premise. I'm not gonna consider only the utility of the character, in some cases I will also consider how tedious or difficult is it to recruit them, and there is also gonna be another factor we're gonna consider in the future. Without further ado, let's start! We start off with main character Kahara. This already makes you realize that yes, I am gonna divide the playable version from the side character version of these characters, because you have no idea how different are they in the utility department especially. So. Main Kahara. His starting equipment is pretty basic, but uh, his shines with the skills. Engard, which allows you to get a new turn, is available in his skill tree. Steel, which allows you to get a whole bunch of other stuff, such as, I don't know, scroll of fencing to learn fast attack, or book of enlightenment, or soul stones. I already have a video on the best skills of the game, if you're interested you can watch it. And also let's not forget about his unique skill, the skill only Kahara can learn in the intro, which is escape plan. This is gonna increase your escape chances against the magic majority of the enemies, because of all these reasons, and also because of the fact that uh, having him in his party prevents you from getting the side character Kahara, he completely deserves the S tier. After him, we have main character Darcy. Main character Darcy has a starting equipment even better of the one of Kahara, with arm guards. And yeah, technically she can also get leg guards instead, but we know arm guards is better because the majority of the enemies in the dungeon is gonna cut off your arms. Also, her skill pool is very good with fast attack, which is godly on bosses, or in any place in which you can set up one turn, to gain one extra turn for the whole battle. Defense stance is situational, but in some cases it may be used. And then leg sweep, which is literally a door killer. Leg sweep, yes, is able to destroy all the doors that you can interact in a fight with. And because of all these reasons combined, Darcy deserves to a spot in the S tier. Oh boy, what a great start! The first two entries got S tier. But don't get too used to it, trust me. So, the third one is Enki main character. Enki main character is very good because it potentially has max affinity with any god of your choice. Jokes aside, take the god of the depths because Enki is the only character that is able to get max affinity with him without using an empty scroll. But unfortunately he has some downsides despite of this. First of all, he cannot equip all the stuff available in the dungeon. Mainly he is not able to equip heavy weapons such as the gaunt armor, which is one of the best armors of the game, or use the double-handed swords, for example he cannot use the claymore. And you may say in this moment, oh but you can just make a marriage so you get the affinity with God of the Depths and you can use all those equipment, I'm judging the characters by themselves, I don't care about the possibility of creating a marriage, because in that sense everyone can create a marriage, then do I have to boost everyone because of that? No! You know what I have to do instead? I have to penalize Enki even more, because as a main character Enki is not able to make a marriage with Darcy or Ragnavaldor reducing the possibilities you have. And also, on top of that, the skills he has access to from his skill tree are terrible. Maybe you may argue greater blood magic is kinda useful, but it loses its utility pretty quickly. Without God of the Depths affinity he would be a D tier, but with it it's a A tier. And now we slowly start going south, because the next one is Ragnavaldor main character. <sighs> what do we even have to say? What do I even have to say, guys? Very bad skills for a in party member. The only one that is kinda useful is marksmanship, but it requires you to start with the short bow so you deal less damage to the opponent. The plus 10 attack is almost never gonna be useful, except maybe against the cleaver arm of the guard in terror and starvation difficulty. And even then, you can just uh, dodge the guards. And I don't have much else to say about it. It's not as terrible as some other characters we are gonna see in the future, but this deserves a B tier. But the good news is we finished with the main characters, now we can actually start with the characters you can recruit in the dungeon, starting off from Legard. 
Legardia can be recruited in a very simple way, it's just a little bit tense, maybe if you are a little bit new to the game, but we are not making a tier list for new players, this is a universal tier list, okay? Also, he starts with a skill, which is a leg sweep, which as I told you, it's a door killer, so it's not half bad, honestly. But that's kinda the problem, he's not anything special, I cannot give you something more than B tier, also considering that he doesn't follow you in the void, so he will not help you in ending D and, uh, in ending C, I guess. I guess since we covered the little daddy, let's cover the little girl. The girl is incredibly easy to recruit. In fact, in the moment in which you enter the dungeon, you can basically instantly recruit her, because there is a guaranteed small key on the table near the Dark Priests. And if you give her the dagger, she is able to dismember some limbs of the enemies, being kinda useful, also because she's a meat shield and she can tank some damage. Even though you can recruit her early, she has some downsides. For example, she cannot keep everything. I have a more in-depth guide about the girl if you're interested. But long story short, I think she deserves a C tier, which is not half bad, honestly. And now, remember when I said that the main character is very different from the recruitable counterpart? Well, it's not the same for Darcy, because even as a side character, she keeps the fast attack ability, she also has defense stance, she doesn't start with arm guards, but still, it's very easy to recruit, because you just have to reach the Cave Dweller Village, which is basically the first four minutes of the game, maybe? If you have access to her, always put her in your team, she's a must. S tier. But uh, hold on, hold on, the next one is gonna let you understand what I mean. Okay, Kahara. Recruitable Kahara. What, what, what do I even say? No, wait, I know what to say. It's a worse Legard, because while Legard has Leg Sweep, he doesn't have any skills. The only reason is not less than C is because it's still a controllable party member that can equip everything. And yes, he's on par with the girl because the girl can be recruited from the start. But if you want to see a character derailment, we may say, let me show you Anki, okay? Now, wait, what did I say while I was talking about the main character, Enki? Without Code of the Depths Affinity, he would be a D tier. Ah, yes, uh, there it is. Bug the quest line. Useless skills were recruited. Hurting is irrelevant because it costs 40 mind. Can't keep everything D tier. Also, to add insult to injury, if you are Darcy or Ragnavalder, you cannot even use him as a marriage target because it's bugged. And now there is something that Ragnavalder supremacists may actually like, because recruitable Ragnavalder is actually kinda decent, because it starts with Warcry, which is useful to be a tank later on, without needing for your main character to use pheromones. It also gives you a free bow to use marksmanship eventually, and it's obtainable pretty easy, it just requires one explosive vial. Honestly, this one is pretty good. Also, I know there is a problem with the interaction with the Legard once you enter inside of Mahabre, but it's not a problem because you can skip that if you enter in Mahabre while in the past. So, um, I don't know I'm saying this. Ragnavalder A tier. Don't get used to it, okay? It's the first and last time I will be gentle to Ragnavalder. But anyways, let's continue. The next one is very different from all the other recruitable party members you will find in the dungeon. I'm talking about Najra. Najra is very strong. It's immortal, he already knows very good spells, Black Orb, Hurting and Greater Hurting. Recruiting him requires uh, not so much work, honestly, like, yeah, you just have to take the Cube of the Depths regardless in your playthrough. And the Eclipse Talisman, uh, yeah, you may take some damage against the Yellow Mage, but uh, how much? 10? 20? 30? Yes, I too got stunlocked to death from a yellow mage, I know that feeling, but uh, no worries. But unfortunately, even despite him being an immortal party member with good spells, he has some downsides. You cannot use pheromones on him because it only lasts one turn, because he will remove pheromones at the end of the turn, cannot keep anything, does not enter in the void, so cannot help for ending C and D, and also can't be used on the final boss of ending B. So basically, it cannot be used against the majority of the final bosses, which is a point in which, you know, party members are the most useful. His crazy immortality power is balanced by the fact that he has these limitations on the bosses, so unfortunately, I will have to give him a B tier. And now we have to talk about uh, the marriage and the abominable marriage. Okay, listen, I know turning into the marriage or the abominable marriage restores your limbs, removes your status effects, but in this tier list I will not consider that part. I'm talking about it so you know, in case you didn't, that they do this. But if we consider purely the character from an outside point of view, 
The marriage is a uh, Ragnavalder with 10 more strength uh, that doesn't really offer anything new to the mix. On the other hand, in the current version is actually bugged. If you try to use Enguard, it's not gonna work unless you equip a cursed shortbow. Because of this, I guess the marriage unfortunately is gonna go to the C tier. And what about the abominable marriage? Well, this one cannot even equip the penance armor or accessories or uh, uh, armor. It it can only equip uh, double-handed swords. D tier. And since we're doing all the controllable party members, let's do even the last one, the Demon Kid. The Demon Kid is the adult version. I mean, technically, it's the kid version of the Demon Baby. This one is uh, the girl. It's it's literally the the girl. Like th they are the same character. They don't have anything different from each other. But you know what's the difference? You get the girl instantly. Instead for the demon kid, you have to kill the old knight, assemble three pages, also going to Mahabre in order to get it. And since the girl was able to stay in C tier mainly because it's very easy to recruit, unfortunately the demon kid is the first E of my tier list. And that's it for the controllable party members of the dungeon, because you see, there is a special category of characters that are uncontrollable in battle. This means they will decide by themselves what to do and what to attack. And they're gonna start this off with maybe the most iconic, uncontrollable party member in the dungeon, Moonless. Moonless has a very easy recruitment, you just have to talk and give her two Rodem mates, which you can easily find on a table in the first floor of the dungeon. She has an inherent extra turn every turn in the battle, and also her bite attack can be increased by the amount of time she... um... she... Bees. If you want to know more, I have a specific video about that, but anyways, you cannot equip her with anything, and because of that reason, she's gonna be a C tier. If you were able to equip something to her, she would be A tier, probably. But what if there was an even more iconic, uncontrollable party member in the dungeon? That means you would be watching the Blood Golem. The Blood Golem is a party member summonable in all the battles by using a specific skill that is gonna deal a little bit of damage to you. And what does the Blood Golem do? 200 HP and with his normal attacks deals around 300 damage. The only downside really is just the auto battle and having to spend one turn to summon it. But still, 200 HP reusable mid shield that deals 300 damage is definitely A tier. Now it's time for something that is discarded by a lot of people but potentially it may be useful in some battles. The Demon Baby. The Demon Baby is the first stage of growth of the Demon Kid, and he has an inherent ability that halves the damage he receives. So he is literally a tank that doesn't need to guard, of course you can just achieve the same result by guarding with anyone else, but still, it's something very interesting. And uh, he is not gonna attack during the battle, but if you teach him skills using the scrolls, he is gonna use the scrolls in battle. But unfortunately, he only lasts 400 seconds before turning into the Demon Kid, which is terrible. And you can only get it after you kill the Old Knight and you do the Mahaber puzzle. So yeah, it's a very cool idea, but unfortunately, you can achieve the same result with much, much less effort. D tier. And now, it's time for the last occasion in which I will bring up a new parameter in the mix, being usable in hard mode. Because the last two entries are usable in hard mode, you heard me right. They are both obtainable with necromancy. I'm talking of course about skeletons and ghouls. Skeletons have slightly less attack than normal party members, but that's honestly not too relevant because they are very easy to recruit, you just need necromancy, and you can equip armors, weapons and accessories on them. I mean, they cannot wield two-handed weapons except the Born Shears, but they are still a pretty solid choice, also considering they are immune to blindness, infection, poison... Uh, the effect of zero mind, basically almost everything. Like, the only things that come to my mind in this moment they are not immune to are fracture, because you know, they are literally made of bones. But apart from that, I gotta be honest, if they were controllable, they would be immediately S tier for all these immunities. But unfortunately, they will have to stay in B tier. And now it's time for the last character of the game, Ghouls, and unfortunately we don't end up in a bang here, because they cannot equip anything. 
literally anything. They are Najwa, but uh, wait, uh, what did Najwa have uh, that was more useful than them? Ah uh, yes, uh, he was controllable, he had a black orb, he was immortal for example. They are literally just useful as marriage partner. And I know they can be obtained in hard mode, but check this out, a better version can already be obtained, the skeleton. But for Apollo, what do you do if the skeleton dies? But that's the point! Ghosts are never gonna be the first choice, which is the same argument I could have for all the positions on this tier list. E tier. So this is the end of the tier list. Enjoy.